world holds dear is but a backdrop of co Everyone, over here! Is everyone awake now? Mona says that she has something important to tell everyone. The first glimmering daybreak after the return of the Imanakreish most certainly revitalizes one's innermost spirits. What Main Fräulein means is that she is ready to take on the next challenge. Yeah, we're rested and ready too! All right, then I'll get to the crux of the matter. I just peeked into my scry glass, and there's a new mirage forming on that island over there. And I have a feeling that this one is my mirage. Oh, so now it's Mona's turn. You were with us for all of ours. Seems like it's time for us to go with you into yours. Uh, well, I'm sure there's nothing to see, really. Lady Magistus, are you embarrassed? No, absolutely not. <laughs> it's not like I'm worried about everyone judging me after seeing my embarrassingly pathetic mirage or anything. This emphatic no sounds rather like a thinly disguised yes. Well, <clears throat> astrologists are often regarded as something out of this world, right? But what if my mirage is nothing like that? Fret not. Your princessin is not so foolish as to entertain preconceived notions on how thy mirage should or should not present itself. Yeah, me neither. Not that I have low expectations of you, Mona, but personally, I think you're a kind soul, and you shouldn't feel like you have to live up to anything more than that. I'm sure Mona's mirage will stay true to her kind heart. in there just to do some sightseeing. There's other reasons too, right? Really? Well, okay then. I suppose I'm not worried as long as everyone doesn't get too excited. All right then, let's get going. According to my scry glass, we've arrived at the Mirage. Okay, let's find the entrance first. Is that it? Over there? Huh. This looks like some kind of pool. Do we have a non-swimmer among us? No, I don't think that's the real problem here. <laughs> Someone's scared, huh? Well then, I'll go first. Oh, and there she goes! She's gonna show off her oh-so-perfect swimming skills now! <clears throat> Please be mindful of your wording, Main Fräulein. Oh, right. See you later! Mona dived right into the pool and disappeared! Let's catch up with her! What a spectacular structure! Wow! I've never seen anything like this! Hey! Uh, Mona! Your mirage is amazing! Though it falls short of the glorious Imanakreish, one must admit that it is an impressive realm nonetheless, Lady Magistus. <sighs> At least it's not showing me getting lectured by the old hag. Thank goodness. Well, what else would you expect of a genius astrologist's mirage? Okay, 
Let's get started. Thank you. 
over there. And now it's gone! Let's follow it! Very proud of my talent in astrology. Huh? What in the... Is that my voice? I believe that astrology is a valuable discipline and that it is capable of revealing the inner workings of this universe. Oh, that's me talking to myself. When people discovered I could perform divination, they began to bombard me with inquiries. When is my missing son going to be found? Do they love me or not? Will I ever recover? person I am, I told them exactly what I saw through the scry glass. Though honesty may bring about resentment, I... I couldn't lie in the face of such a noble art. Astrology is a scam. That's insane. Can you please leave me alone now? I need some space. It felt as if I was being stabbed with razor-sharp knives formed by their disappointment. I could see the future, yet I felt miserable, as if I'd fallen into an abyss. Justus, this is heartbreaking. Ugh, please don't try to comfort me. It'll only make me feel embarrassed. Come on, you don't need to pretend in front of us. You need a hug? N no. <laughs> that was really how I felt back when I first started out in astrology, but... I've matured now. I'm no longer so easily swayed by random people's opinions. Who would have thought... Even Magistus, the court archmage, was not spared of vexatious times in her career. 
It must have been difficult to be misunderstood by others. I'm glad that you were able to move past that. Actually, there are many who have given up astrology due to similar circumstances. But I am a genius, so it's only fair that I'm able to accomplish what others cannot. It's pretty inspiring to hear you say all that in an amazing place like this. Yes, good. Keep going. <clears throat> Sorry to interrupt, but the door is that way. Alright, now I'll let you shower me with praise after all the mysteries are solved. The surroundings appear to have changed. This isn't the beach we originally left. The area appears to be the mountains of Mondstadt. Wait, have we been sent back to Mondstadt? Yet the boundless ocean still surrounds us. There should be another pool around here for us to enter. Over here, y'all! Center. Oh, something seems to be floating on the water there. Uh, is it a painting? Or what is it? It seems to be hinting at a specific place. It is anticipating that the princessin would guide her loyal followers to the location that has been chosen by fate. Why is it always you that has to take the lead? <sighs> Whatever, doesn't matter. Let's just find this place first. Order guide you. Gather. For him. I'm going in! There is no escape! Torn to oblivion! This is order! One man's stone is another man's gem.
Astrology reveals the truth unreservedly, but not everyone is willing to accept their faith, no matter. Running into difficulties is part of practicing the craft. I must also become stronger myself in order to convince people. I once met an adventurer on a mountain who also happened to be picking fruits. He was even kind enough to share some with me. So, in return, I agreed to perform a divination for him. The results were terrifying. I advised him to give up adventuring as soon as possible, otherwise he could meet his end within the next two... He fell silent for a while. Surprisingly, he didn't doubt the results of my divination like others had, but he looked quite perplexed. Even so, I have to keep going. Adventurers can't just give up in the face of hardship. With that, he picked up his pack and headed for the peak. However, try as I might, 
I could never forget that incident. Why is that? Oh, we're back again. So, uh, Mona, is that adventurer dead now? Huh. <sighs> That was the only time I ever saw him, and that was more than three years ago, which means he's no longer alive. But isn't there still a chance that he's alive? You know, like maybe you just made a mistake. You can't call it divination if you reject anything bad and believe the good unreservedly. That's just self-deception. Of course, casually performing divination for fun might be a different matter, but in my field of expertise, there's no room for lies. To contradict my own reading would be a blasphemy against astrology. Cruel, but truthful. Such is fate. I don't usually say things like this, but while we're on the topic, I really hope you don't confuse astrology with those fortune stick peddlers that you see along the streets. Astrology does not exist to please. We astrologists are here to verify and witness the truths of this world. Ugh. Which is why astrology is a disdained profession. It is a mighty art, but unfortunately one that annoys people nonetheless. Why dost thou protest so much, Lady Magistus? Thou seems not to be the sort with whom one would be loath to be associated. What main Fräulein means is that she's glad to be friends with you. No, that's not exactly what I said. Whatever has gotten into you, Oz, you misinterpret my utterances with increasingly alarming frequency. Oh my, why could that be? Perhaps I have been concerned that Main Fräulein could offend her friends and have been attempting to soften her words. Although you're the only astrologist I know, you've left an awesome impression on me. You're not annoying at all. Those who go snooping around for secrets yet ignore whatever they don't want to hear, they're the ones who should reflect on themselves. Knowing your fate doesn't come cheap. If one could simply avoid fate with just a few words, no one would have to endure the pain of parting. Mona, don't take others' comments to heart. Follow your heart and never forget what's right. Oh, it, it, I it don't need comforting, thank you very much. I'm very tough, you know. Oh, uh... Well then, um... <sighs> Thank you. What dost thou say? Speak up and offer your highest reverence and blessings to the princessin. Okay, okay, your highness. Instead of making a scene, why don't you go collect the other fragments in the new location reflected by the pool? We can't enter the mirage without them. Main Fräulein, you are the only one with eyes sharp enough to locate the secrets. <sighs> If that's the case, very well. I shall proceed to the beach. Let's go, Mona. Oh, okay. Coming! <laughs> Inazuma 
shines eternal! here once more. Looks like the story's not finished yet. Let the adventure continue. Osmanthus wine tastes the same as I remember. But where are those who share the memory? Osmanthus wine tastes the same as I remember. But where are those who share the memory? Every journey has its final day. Don't rush. Yeah. 
It stopped by the water, but didn't go in. Seems almost like it's waiting for something. First star waiting for this one? Another house in Mondstadt? What are we doing in my house? Your house? This is your house? My, how unexpected. I heard Lady Magistus lived a modest life. But this abode... Look at the labels on these books on the ground. Only one of its kind? 990,000 more? Hey, that's super expensive! There are so many expensive-looking hardcovers over here. So this is what an astrologist's room looks like. The rooms are exquisitely designed. This place must be very expensive. Hey, I'm just occasionally out of Mora, that's all. I never said I was a pauper. 
You're not. Oh, so what about those times I treated you to meals and had you over to my place for dinner? Mean Fräulein, mind your phrasing. Ahem. <clears throat> Thou wert blessed with the coveted opportunity to enter the palace of the Imanach Reich and meet with the Kaiser and Kaiserin de Verertelung. Or hast thou conveniently forgotten this magnificent occasion? Oh, yes! The stew and cold cuts your mother made were heavenly. I could go for some more of that right now. Lady Magistus, this is not the time for such things. Is that Mondstadt cuisine? I want to try some. I heard Mondstadt has lots of local delicacies, especially meat dishes. Hmm. Then I shall extend to you the honor of meeting the Kaiser and Kaiserin with me on a future occasion. Really? Hey, we should go too! Now that you mention it, it has been a while since I visited a friend's house. I shall gladly oblige. Oh, but shouldn't we bring some sort of gift? Those two are very kind and understanding, so please, don't worry about that. Just bring yourselves. You seriously have to try her mom's cold cut platter. It's a specialty or something. <laughs> anyway, it's simply delightful. Not to interrupt, but perhaps we should start working on the puzzle at hand? Ever since I entered this place, I have found myself most preoccupied with that ornament. Oh, right. Astrologists are able to understand the most complex signs among the stars. And because of this, we are not allowed to show any arrogance. If one believes that astrology grants them unlimited power, they will face banishment by the stars. In the past, I was ignorant enough to think that I understood all fates in the universe. Maybe it was some form of punishment. But I became lost. I couldn't see the stars any longer. You should not get confused. If you should become confused one day, not even astrology will be able to help you then. That's what the old hag said. We astrologists can't predict our own fate, but today, those words seem to carry a different meaning. I understand now that people won't always follow a beacon's guiding light, even though the way forward may be dark and dangerous. They will still resolutely forge ahead. Fate is called such precisely because it cannot be altered or reversed. I understand the governing laws of the universe and have glimpsed secrets between heaven and earth. Observing it is enough for me. There are no perfect legends and no heroes that can save everyone. Instead of dwelling on my helplessness, what I should do is seize my own destiny. Lady Magistus, I believe this is the firmest evidence yet of your immense genius. You truly are the greatest archmage in the history of the Immanachreich. Thank you. Although the Immanachreich really doesn't have that much of a history. Stars like diamonds and the moon like a pearl. 
This is the most brilliant night sky I've ever beheld. It's beautiful. To call up such a mirage, Mona must have a vast and boundless sea of stars in her heart. Hmm. Oh, I'm just thinking. These must be the things that we aspire to. This night sky is incredibly beautiful. In fact, I might go so far as to say it's even more beautiful than what I usually see in divinations. All the stars are in their rightful place. This is definitely my mirage. Only here can I see extraordinary sights like these. Extraordinary? Why do you say that? You know, the night sky of Tevat is truly marvelous. All the answers in the world seem to have been hidden within. When is my missing son going to be found? Do they love me or not? Will I ever recover? As your stars move across the sky, they record all your life events in their path. And among all the people in the world, a considerable number will see their stars deviate from their path. When your stars are on track, it means you will be healthy, happy, and at peace. Conversely, if your stars go off track, everything will get worse. The starry sky in my divinations would never look as perfect as this. Some stars would lose their way, and others would fall. I wish everyone could be happy and stay on track. To this end, I offer advice and tell the truth. I know it's useless. All fates are already revealed in the night sky, with mine too, just another among them. I can't change anything. Even so. Outside of astrology, outside of the words of truth, I still cling to the wisp of an irrational fantasy. We must all live within the confines of reality, but... Call me presumptuous. But I still believe in miracles. In this vast sea of stars, there are stars for you, for me, for everybody. What are the chances of one star encountering another? Are these encounters not the most wonderful miracles in all of destiny? <sighs> I don't know. But within Tevat, the stars in the sky will always have a place for us. Even if astrology is resolutely rational, fate remains arbitrary, cruel, but romantic. <laughs> I think I have figured out what those stars are hiding. Now I will seize my own destiny.
There was a transparent bird made of crystal. It was beautiful and fragile and could sing the most beautiful songs. But since mortals couldn't see it, they believed it to be a trick. How could a transparent bird possibly exist, let alone sing? When the bird heard that, it flapped its wings and flew across mountains and seas all the way to the night sky, where it turned into a star. Its brilliance was so dazzling that it illuminated everyone. It allowed all those that could see it to follow its light through the dark night, to sail through the seas under the guidance of the stars. It was born in wisdom, but trapped in ignorance. It has never voiced a complaint, for this is its destiny. Guiding people to see their destinies is the very meaning of its existence. We're back here again! So, are we completely out of the mirage? How strange. My mirage didn't contain any hints on the Tui or the machine. Does that mean they had nothing to do with these mirages after all? Or perhaps these mirages are a mere consequence and not part of a process at all. Um, Paimon's lost. I mean, these mirages were not steps towards solving the mystery, but rather a direct effect of whatever's going on. Someone did something to bring the mirages into being. As they were just passive side products, it was natural that they couldn't provide us with any useful information. In other words, those mirages were only about ourselves. Hmm. Pure materializations of ourselves. Interesting. <laughs> Everyone, maybe we should go back to where this whole thing began. During our first day on the island, the Traveler and I checked out the Fatui camp together. We found a strange machine there, as well as some disoriented Fatui. The researcher who spoke to us claimed that the machine was just a Fatui industrial invention. He even promised to not disturb us. Right, right! And the Cappy Cap guy looked half asleep the entire time! He kept talking nonsense! I wonder, is it possible that madness and mirages are two different outcomes of the machine's influence? If so, everything can be traced back to that damaged machine. Except for the difference in how it affects people. This, I believe, is caused by differences between the affected people themselves. Oh. When you put it that way, it is indeed difficult to distinguish dreams and hallucinations. So what you're saying is, the device affected us differently because we are different from the Fatui. Yes, and according to our observations over these past few days, I think the difference is that we all have stronger willpower. Yeah, I can get behind that. People with strong willpower will hallucinate instead of falling into madness. But those who break too easily can't maintain a stable mirage. In other words, we should go back to the Fatui camp and destroy that machine right away! No. It should be repaired rather than destroyed. What Main Fräulein means is that rashly destroying a machine we do not understand may lead to more serious consequences. It would be better to find a way to repair it first. Right. It pays to be cautious. If my guess is correct, that machine is capable of influencing the human brain. So we'd better tread carefully. So let's go now! There's no time to waste!
<laughs> Everyone's gone crazy. Everyone should get out of here. Well, they'll never wake up. But I was right, my precious. <laughs> you are invincible. <laughs> precious? What's his precious? A miracle machine. Definitely not impossible. I think he's referring to that machine. 
What a drunkard. Hmm. Oh, goodness. The smell of alcohol. Main Fräulein, please allow me to fan the fumes away with my wings. Oh, excellent. Please fan them away for me, too. Certainly. I've checked the surroundings, but there's no one else here. Isn't that strange? The Fatui is a big organization, but he's the only one left at this camp. What's more, we didn't even see him the last time we were here. Even the larger gentleman from the first time is missing. I think they must be hiding somewhere. As for why they may be hiding, I'm afraid we'll have to ask him. But he's as drunk as Tone Deaf Bard! <sighs> Should we wait for him to sober up? Cleanse him with the Holy Spring of Punishment. Main Fräulein means to splash him with water. Ooh, sounds like a good idea! Let's try! Hey, he opened his eyes! Uh, huh? Hey, are you one of the Fatui? Can you tell us what happened here and what that machine is for? <laughs> Fatui? Ha! Fatui! Uh, those blockheads from the administration will regret it now! <laughs> That's what you get for rejecting my research and forcing me to... Forcing me to... To conduct my research on this deserted island! <laughs> my precious! My precious! Uh, why is he crying? Looks like he has a lot of pent-up emotions. You mocked me! And my precious invention! You... You don't know anything about the future! Only my invention can help us conquer the world! <laughs> idiots! Such idiots! <laughs> Ow! Don't hit me! I won't blow up the lab again. I'm, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to. This man's gone insane. There's no way we can communicate with him. He wasn't like this when we first met him. It looks like the effects have grown worse, to the point of driving him mad. My, my manuscript. My manuscript. Only that can, can save. <laughs> manuscript? Where is it? Don't yell at me. Don't yell at me. <laughs> Fischl, don't yell at him. <laughs> then I'll... Let me try. A uh, kind sir, look at me. Now tell me, where did you hide your manuscript? <laughs> no, no, don't force me to write a report. <laughs> Go away. <laughs> uh, he's completely lost in his own imagination. Allow me. Hmm. Please excuse me. <laughs> oh! My butt! <sighs> my brain is finally starting to work again. It's, it's not a mushy mess anymore. Can you tell me where you put the manuscript? The manuscript. The manuscript... He's in the crack over there. Oh, finally. Otherwise, I was going to have to blast some of my loudest rock and roll in his ears. Kazuha hesitated for a long time before making a move. He's so nice. Everyone, let's search the stone cracks nearby for the manuscript.
Found it! Congratulations! We found the key to solving the problem. Let me see. Just as I thought. This machinery, named Cognitive Mimicry, is capable of altering the state of people's brains. It was invented by the researcher we met earlier. His name is Persikov. According to the manuscript, the Fatui officials did not support Persikov's research. They believed he had taken the wrong path. But Persikov insisted on putting his machine to use. In order to achieve that, he disassembled the machine and used his connections to transport the parts to this deserted island. How did they find this island? <sighs> the Fatui's intelligence network is not to be underestimated. Persikov was dead set on carrying out his experiments on this island. Most of his subjects were junior Fatui soldiers who all signed a waiver beforehand. It looks like they really thought this machine would benefit the Fatui. How does the machine work? That's most likely top secret. The manuscript didn't reveal any details, but Persikov did mention that the machine was modeled after the power of a god. Does that mean there's a god connected to these dreamlike mirages and the Fatui found a way to research it? Clearly. Otherwise, they wouldn't have been able to reproduce the god's power. Anyway, Persikov's experiment did not go as planned. The machine broke down just days after it was activated. They tried to fix it, but... The technologically illiterate Fatui soldiers completely ruined the machine. Even its most important component of all, the crystalline cores, got ejected and disappeared. A testament to the importance of maintenance in all aspects of life. I believe we can all learn something from this. Persikov may be a mad scientist, but he didn't want to see his subordinates suffer. Besides, if he didn't solve the problem, he would end up going insane as well. As a last resort, Persikov went out on his own to look for the cores. But he was just a sickly researcher, unfit for the task. He had to give up. Then, Persikov went searching for the soldiers who had gone mad and strayed from the group, and took them to a hidden cave. I think that was where they were at the day we arrived on this island. Persikov was taking a strong Fatui soldier somewhere. Yes. It took Persikov all of his strength to get all the missing soldiers into the cave. He tried to snap them out of it with music and poetry. But nothing worked. We came here once, but there was no one around. Come to think of it, that must have been the day Persikov was busy gathering the soldiers into the cave. There's good news and bad news written on the last few pages. The good news is, Persikov managed to figure out the location of the crystalline cores by piecing together the snippets of information he could get from the delirious soldiers. The bad news is, Persikov failed to revive them and eventually succumbed to the device's influence himself. The last few pages of the manuscript are just unintelligible drunken scribbles. <sighs> It appears that the responsibility for this issue now falls to my retainers and I. There's a map in the manuscript. The markings should indicate the locations of the crystalline cores. We've got no choice but to find the crystalline cores now!
Reduced to just standing around. How absurd.
That's what the manuscript says, anyway. Let's give it some time. Hopefully it'll return to normal. if all of this hadn't ended up occupying so much of our time. Hm. Apologize to me and my retainers at once. Uh-huh. Oh, no. Oh, no. I, I'm out of here. Hey, hey! Don't leave me here on my own. Mr. Persikoff's still there. We need to save him. <laughs> Those two definitely seem a little more lucid now. It looks like we succeeded. Then perhaps we should call it the Embassy of the Imanakreish and Dodo Land. Huh? No! That's too many words! Paimon would prefer something easy to remember. Come on, let's go home now. to thy liking? Paimon's loving it. Wonderful. Main Fräulein invited you all here not only to witness the arrival of our Holy Land, but most importantly, she wished that you could all relax and enjoy the summer. Great. Well, I've come to the right place. I love it here. May this place become an eternal paradise. 
Main Fräulein says she hopes to go on more adventures with you here in the future. Of course! And you should come find me and Leo when you get the time. I'll show you around. Oh, also, my friend runs the best restaurant in Leo. I'm sure you'll love it. If you're into opera, you should go see Yunjin. She's the nicest person and she likes making friends with new and interesting people. I'm sure the two of you will have plenty to talk about with your shared passion for theatrics. Oh? If Lady Shinyan speaks so highly of it, then I must entertain the idea. Traveler, I have a suggestion. There's a snack called Roasted Lavender Melon in Inazuma, which goes rather well with fish. Why don't we roast some fruit and seafood for dinner tonight? Oh? Did you try it in Inazuma? <laughs> That's great. You know, I want to follow your example and travel around the world. Hopefully, I can also make good friends along the way. That means a lot coming from you. Ah, you're all here. I've noticed an issue. Although we've fixed the machine, as you can see, the mirages on the islands have still not disappeared. Hmm, I've noticed that too. But considering it took some time for the mirages to appear, it may also take some time for them to disappear. Yes, that's definitely possible. In other news, my scryglass seems to be working fine now. The divination results are also looking about right. Although... Although, there are some parts in the results that I don't quite understand. It's as if there is some sort of power surrounding us. And it's still watching us. Do you think it's caused by the machine? Or perhaps Persikov? Sorry, I'm also not sure. All I know is that the power is not hostile at the moment. Whatever it is, it doesn't seem to harbor any ill will toward us. Well, although there's nothing left to disturb us and we can finally kick back and enjoy our vacation, we still ought to be cautious while we're on these islands. I will keep seeing what the stars say every day. I promised Fischl that I'd be her guard. I can help. Good. I'll be counting on you. <sighs> Goodness knows why those girls are so carefree about everything. I suppose it falls to me to be extra vigilant. Oh, coming! Oh, so we're gonna call the tone deaf bard, right? Well, hello there, strangers. <laughs> you finally called. I thought you were having so much fun that you'd completely forgotten about me. Nope. Oh. Tone deaf bard, a whole bunch of really strange things happened. A strange machine that can imitate the power of a god? Wow! <laughs> I didn't know the Fatui had plans like that. Their imaginations are truly running wild. So, judging from your tone, it sounds like you don't know any more about this than we do. Alas! I am but a humble bard who sings for his mora in the tavern. Why would I know anything about it? Ugh, so annoying. <laughs> but other than that, did you two have fun? We did! We ate a lot of yummy food and saw loads of amazing things! It was really cool! <laughs> That's good. The point of traveling is to record any feelings stirred along the way. As long as you had an unforgettable experience, this journey has served its purpose. As for the mysterious voice, although we don't know who it was, not only did she not harm you, she also helped you to gain a better understanding of each other, right? If you look at it that way, maybe she meant you well. 
I mean, if she was able to intercept Alice's communication tool, I'm sure she's also plenty capable of attacking you. Hmm... Tone Deaf Bard is right. <laughs> I'm glad to bring you some peace of mind. Just enjoy your vacation to the fullest. And don't forget to tell me all about the marvelous mirages when you get back. I want to record all these beautiful memories and turn them into ballads. Every summer will become an unforgettable song. Then I'll just wait for your return. Happy vacationing! Hmm, if Tone Deaf Bart thinks it's okay, then maybe there's nothing to worry about. After all, Tone Deaf Bart is still a god. We should probably trust him. Let's head back. We don't want to keep everyone waiting. Hold on. Did official say earlier that she's going to catch some crabs? Oh, Paimon wants to go too! Now you have solved the mystery. Doesn't it make you feel happy? Satisfied? Don't worry, I won't hurt you. I'm just a little bird that sometimes flies by these islands and am now watching you from far, far away. I just so happened to sense a power here that has something to do with me. I was curious, so I landed on the beach to quietly watch everything that took place on these islands. It was fascinating. The ones who came here to work were so busy and yet, I still saw genuine smiles on their faces from time to time. And then all of you arrived later on, bringing your glorious dreamscapes and wonderful willpower. Your dreams are like the pure and delicate bubbles floating on the water. The more beautiful the illusion, the more it fascinates me. I'm not able to travel myself, but I do admire free spirits like yourself. So, I helped them design a little something for you all. I hope you liked it. As I said, I don't have an agenda. I'm just a little bird. I stopped here to admire your lives, joys, sorrows, and all. You are a special person with a unique and brilliant glow. I decided to communicate with you in this way because I'm really curious about you. There's no need to wonder about my name. Maybe one day in the future, we will meet in another place. When that time comes, I think you'll be able to recognize me. 